All right, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Barbershop Group Podcast. Glad to have you guys with us. Of course, we are here with uh, Dr. Fulton today, the author of The Shame Factor. Um, you guys, we, we, we know that by now some of you have the book. And uh, <laughs> yes. you know, if, you, if you do not have the book, make sure you go in the show notes and, and click the link Come to on. buy the book. Or if you're on tbgmen.com, you can purchase the book at the on the uh, on the website there. OK, um, guys, you know, you've seen the title. You know that this is about male domestic violence. And um, as things go, sometimes I have a story or two to share with you all. Um, obviously, male domestic abuse and violence is a lot of shame involved in that right um and i've got to lot. tell you yeah, yeah. A, a lot doc you a know lot, when i was man. in uh, brutal when i was in college um i had the unfortunate um the unfortunate occurrence of getting stabbed by um by someone by someone that i was involved with and um wow you know, it was not it, it wasn't retaliation. Oh. It wasn't retaliation or anything like that. It was I was just a stone cold victim of uh, being stabbed, um, and it was one of the most humiliating things that I oh. could experience in my life. And uh, I don't talk about it often. Um, I don't talk about it often because, you know, at, at this point, uh, yeah. years later, um, the individual who did it came back and apologized for it, um, talked to me about what was going on in her life at the time and, and why she did it. And, and just, mm -hmm. there, there were so many things happening and I never considered her to be a, a bad person and I still don't. Um, and even though I don't have any contact with her today at all, yeah. uh, I'm aware that I have mutual, we have mutual friends and I know that she's mm -hmm. doing She's doing okay. Um, um, there are some other things that obviously have happened in her own life that uh, are extremely challenging. But with regard to my position with it today, it's been something that I've long been able to get over and uh, and forgive her for. And like I said, where whenever it's warranted, I'll talk about it a little bit. So, yeah. but I know that I'm not the only uh, male that was a victim of domestic abuse. And so we're gonna jump into domestic abuse today, Doc. Um, Absolutely. As you know, Doc, um, today we live in, we live in very contentious times where everybody's kind of like competing with each other for suffering to some degree. Um, and it doesn't mean that people are not suffering. Don't get me wrong, Doc, because I know right, people but, are, right? But like who, who has the most suffering, I hate to say it, like a contest? If you yeah, will. It's, and it's impossible. It's virtually impossible to keep up with everybody's pain, right? Even those of us who are empaths. Well, I tell you, one of the things about being a male empath is that, man, I can start to feel everybody's pain. And the next thing you know, I need to go see the doc because I'm falling into a deep depression and I'm in trouble. Um, and I tell everybody. Underst oh, yeah. Understated, Charles. Under yeah. Male empaths, you're not supposed to you're not supposed to be like a sponge. That's right. You're, spo yeah. you're supposed to res um, resist it and be resilient, which is impossible. Yeah. yeah. That's an oxymoron. It doesn't right. work, Charles. Right. It does not work. does not work. does so, not work. You know, we know a lot of times we yep. talk about shame uh, and we talk about shame as, as, a, as an emotion. And there are many components. I believe that shame is its own type of tree. It's got branches in it. And it's yes. Diverse. Charles, there's the anxiety tree, depression. Mm -hmm. And the shame tree is its own tree, mm -hmm. diagnostic yeah. tree. We, we haven't yeah. done that yet, but that's where it's going, Charles. Got you. Got you. And in that tree or on that tree, sometimes yes. there is the presentation of, of all the, of, you know, abuse. And in this particular case, we're talking about physical and sexual and verbal abuse. as and emotional. And emotional. I, as I, the verbal and emotional. <laughs> you want to put those two together. Right on. Yeah. Verbal and emotional, yeah. And so that's something that we know guys deal with, right? So, you know, across the United States, um, nearly a quarter of men report some form of sexual violence in their lifetime. That's just, that's just sexual violence, okay? Approximately one in 10 men in the U.S. experience, you know, contact sexual violence, physical oh. violence, 
stalking by an intimate partner in a lifetime, uh, all of these things. Now, I do want to add a caveat for you guys, right? It says one in 10 men. Those are adults. But I'll tell you, it's one in six boys up to the age of 18 that experience uh, sexual violence, okay? So as you get uh -huh. older, the sexual violence kind of decreases. But when you're young, it's one in six, okay? Um, I think that's I think that's one in four. You think it's one in four? Yeah. That's my right. professional experience. Okay. So you say it's one in four because you think it's 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 underreported based on what, Doc? Uh I'm in one right now. Mm -hmm. The system doesn't believe boys when they tell talk about it, but they'll believe yeah. a girl. It has nothing to do with race or but I've got three boys right now. I know have been violated. And we're okay. fighting tooth and nail. Why is their story not credible? Mm, I see. Why is their story not credible? Yeah. Because they're boys. Because they're boys, huh? Yeah. I hate to say it. It is a bias that we that's beyond uh, the reach of most of us. We don't even believe it. Yeah. yeah. And so when you say that they, they, they believe girls, but they don't believe boys, I do want to clarify for individuals listening who may be women. Dr. Poulter isn't saying that. Uh, it, Women are, completely, women are completely believed because we know, Doc, that... That's women, not true. Yeah, women make the... That's not true. Correct. A lot of people don't believe the woman. But what we're saying is that people still tend to believe women and girls Over. more than they believe... Often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Charles, for girls, the hill to credibility isn't as steep as it is for boys. I see. Okay. The hill... For yeah. boys might be 50% straight mm -hmm. up, where girls yeah. may be 20%. Wow. It's still a lot of work for women. Don't you? Yeah. But uh, Charles, I'm, I'm aghast in 2021 that I have to argue with lawyers that these boys aren't lying. Right. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. That's amazing. It, it, it's, it, it's amazing and it's disgusting. And it's astonishing. Uh, so, guys, listen, you are listening to Dr. Steve Poulter, the author of The Shame Factor. Uh, we are going to take a look at some of the facts around male victimization uh, here in a moment. Stick with us. We'll be back right after the break. Hey, guys, it's Charles, and we're back. We're talking about uh, male victimization, uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional and verbal abuse, and, uh, and how it's a little bit more prevalent uh, with men than what a lot of people tend to think. So here's some quick facts about male victimization. Right. Uh, most first time victims, they occur before the age of 25, with many victims first experiencing violence before the age of 18. Now, again, you heard me say that we're focused on three particular areas, intimate partners, yes. sexual violence and stalking. So check this out, Doc. Um, oh, man. You know, yeah, about one in three men experience contact, sexual violence, uh, physical violence <sighs> or stalking with an intimate partner or a domestic partner at some point in their lives about one in three that's extremely high right <laughs> charles so let's say it's underreported could it be 50 percent? man that's crazy that that's something else when you think about that one in three like who would have thought that right okay i lose the bet i don't call one in three out of i don't know i under as i'm saying one in five 20 percent no, Doc, we're both broke because we both would have lost that. Bet, lost. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, right on. Let me tell you, nearly uh, 56, nearly 56% of men who were victims of contact sexual violence or physical violence or stalking, right, by an intimate partner, they first experienced these forms of violence before the age of 25. So these men are extremely young and are experiencing this type of violence. Charles, tell, tell the audience what contact sexual partner means. Okay, good. So uh, yeah. contact sexual violence is this. It includes rape. So that's penetration of the victim being made yes. to penetrate, you know, being made to penetrate somebody else. Um, right. And it also includes sexual coercion or unwanted sexual contact. Okay, so that's what contact sexual violence means. Okay. Um, so when we speak in terms of sexual violence, doc, now here's one for you. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. When you're talking about that Ugh. violence, you're ready for this yeah. number. Oh man. One, one in four men 
in the U.S. experience some form of contact sexual violence in their life? One in four. That's even higher, Doc, than the one in six uh, from the boys who report being sexually abused between uh, zero and 18. That's one in six, okay? One in four men report sexual contact violence at some point in their lives. Who would have known? Okay. Who would have known? Deep. Charles, it is... I'm with you. Who knew? And I just pause with you. Shame is like it's the CIA of secrets. Yeah, yeah. On this yeah. arena, it yeah. is the, you, the CIA I, isn't this tight. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, and, and you know, uh, but wow. there's a couple others I want to get through to you before the break. Um, before yeah, yeah. And share with you guys. You know, um, about one in fourteen men are made to penetrate someone during their lifetime. They're made to penetrate someone in their lifetime. Just think about that for a minute, Doc. A man, we because, I mean, we know how penises know. work, how they don't work, right? Well, we think we know. He's wow. made to penetrate someone else, one in 14. So let's take a football team. You've got about 50, 55 guys on a football team. That, okay. Four guys. Yep, yep. There you go. It's cutting close to it. There you are. There's you four see? guys. Charles, mm -hmm. in my former life as a police officer, mm -hmm. I got a call about a male rape. Yeah. I I could not believe that a man had been forced to penetrate another man. You couldn't believe it. I, I mean, I believed the victim, but mm -hmm. I was like, I kept looking at him. I go, how? He goes, you have no idea. Mm. Look at that. I wrote that verbatim in the report. You have yeah. no idea. Wow. And that was the truth. I had no mm -hmm. idea. Man, that is something Char else. Charles, we say four, one in 14. Mm -hmm. I still think it's more. I think it's probably think one in more. Yeah. I think it's one in 12. I don't, mm -hmm. One in 10. I don't want to go 10%, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and let's face it. We're, we're at a point where. A lot of men aren't discussing their experiences openly anyway. So we, you know, it's the numbers always probably going to be higher based on the fact that we know there's so much shame involved in men coming forward. But, you know, two more things I have for you uh, before the break. Please. More than, you know, one in 38 men in the U.S. experience attempted rape or completed rape. So one in 38 <laughs> men have been have been raped. So, again, using that football team. Um, you know, we got two one, guys on the team. We got two. two guys. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. have minimum. Right? Okay. Min yes. There you go. Um, among male victims of completed or attempted rape, 71% of them experienced that attempted rape prior to being 25. Okay. Prior to being 25. Right. So, you know, you know, this, this, this zero to 25 age for men is crucial right now, as you can, it, as you can see. Charge you why they say 25? That's when the brain's fully formed. And mm -hmm. we know trauma changes the way the brain develops. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why they're using that as a watermark. Right. That's it's not right. 24, it's 25. 25. That's right. And the last one, when we talk about, oh. violence, you know, because we, we cover intimate partner violence, we cover sexual violence, and now stalking, right? Check this out. About one in 17 men in the U.S. were victims of stalking at some point in their lives, okay? 41% uh, of those victims, they first, they also first experienced stalking, Doc, at 20, or 0 to 25, Last. 0 to 25 years old, okay? Isn't that something? That's something, right? Charles, so now... <laughs> it shows, it's stalking. There's so much stalking done on the internet that people don't yeah. report, on right. Instagram and all the platforms. They That's don't right. report it. They don't report it. That's right. That's right. So we are going to, guys, I know that, that those are a lot of numbers that we're throwing at you all. We're going to take a quick break and let your mind just kind of sit with those. And we'll be back to really, really discuss the definitions of some of this abuse and uh, talk about some other aspects of abuse and violence that men are often victims of, but you don't get to hear a whole lot about. So stick with us and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back in the Barbershop Group Podcast talking about uh, male violence, uh, male sexual violence. So men as victims, 
uh, we, whether it's stalking or, you know, intimate partner violence or sexual violence, this is something that really isn't discussed out in the open in America among men. It's not discussed uh, among women. We don't talk about it, right? Because we Charles, have to say it, it, it's not discussed. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's just, just, it's just it. not discussed. Man, talk about it. Well, that's what I'm here for. We're going to talk about it today. But I want to oh. give you guys, I want to share with you guys some of these definitions. Um, yeah, so please. You understand what it is. You know, men and boys can be victims of sexual violence, uh, of stalking, of intimate, par intimate partner violence. These forms of violence can happen in childhood. They can happen in your teen years or, or in adulthood. OK, and there's a podcast that uh, we did probably about two years ago now where we had a victim of rape on the show uh, talking about his experience of, of how someone broke in his home and sodomized him with uh, with a bat and other objects and how he had to learn how to use his body again. It was very traumatic to sit with him through through oh. just, even for me to listen to that being a victim myself i was like whoa you know here we are again but um you know yeah um that that episode is back there we'll see if we can link to it in the show sure next. um you know intimate partner violence doc uh, yeah, that's phys right physical yeah. so it's in other words domestic violence we just you know add a spin to it intimate partner violence uh, physical violence, uh, sexual violence, uh, psychological aggression, stalking, um, and control of reproductive or sexual health by a current or former partner. Now, I want to focus, Doc, on for a minute the psychological aggression, because that's something that um, men experience a lot of, but they just kind of take it on the chin, don't they? Charles, I had that discussion every week. Yep. Every week, across yep. the board, uh -huh. it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with economics. In yep. fact, the higher the economics, mm -hmm. the worse it is. Yeah, because there's so a funny. lot of, of leverage and blackmailing mm -hmm. or coercion. So yeah, yeah. So, so when we're speaking about psychological aggression, Doc, and I know it's something that you uh, deal with, um, you know, in your profession, uh, can you tell the audience what that actually could look like? For somebody out there you know charles it's interesting it's psychological aggression it people hear about um screaming mm -hmm. verbal abuse um demeaning mm -hmm. devaluating yeah. controlling mm -hmm. the car keys um mm -hmm. there's an app called 360 on your phone your what partner i i got clients to do it they literally can t go on this app and see where you are, whose house you're at, and get a Google picture of where you're at. Wow. Okay. 360. Okay. I got, got parents it. to do that to their kids. I'm like, you're stalking your child. It's for their safety. No, it's for your control. I see. Okay. Got it. Charles, it, what people, it's the dynamics of emotional blackmailing. Yeah. Where they're here, you're mm -hmm. here. And mm -hmm. then I thought about this word, Charles, when I read what you sent me today. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve that. I tell people, get, get away from deserve. Mm -hmm. Do you choose it? Think right. about choice. Right. I know we're getting into it, but that's what it is, Charles. Yeah. It's, the, it's the relationship bully, in quotes. Okay. The relationship bully. Yeah. So here's the other, um, a couple other yeah. forms of violence that we want to touch on. Mm -hmm. Sexual activity. So sexual violence, right? Uh, that sexual activity when consent is not obtained or are given freely. Okay, so if you if you guys out there have been groped before or or something like that, um, yep, that that would be included. Okay, somebody's walked mm -hmm. up to you and touched you or did this thing called frittage where they try to sneak a little feel as they walk by or something. Yep, mm -hmm. even if or a belly rub, a belly, a belly rub. rub. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, here's one doc. You know, uh, for you guys out there with uh, barrel chest, you know, we work out a lot. Woman walks yeah. up to you and she, she rubs the front of your chest. You know, she touches your pecs. You know, did you ask for that? You didn't ask for it, did you? Okay. Well, I mean, you're not going to go screaming through uh, the office or the store that this person did mm -hmm. it to you. But guess what? I mean, that's, that's a non-consensual touch. Okay. That's and a sexual assault. That's sexual Charles. assault. 
That's the definition. Okay. Uh, Contact sexual violence. So that includes things like uh, rape, uh, penetration of the victim, being made to penetrate somebody else, uh, sexual coercion, or unwanted sexual contact. And we covered that before, but just so you know, that's what it is. And now here's one that a lot of guys don't think about, but it is extremely important in these times because of social media. And I can tell you guys, listen, you have probably involved, been involved with uh, a woman at some point who you may have broke things off or you may still be involved with her and she is snooping around through your social media or following you so that she can see who else you follow or paying attention to whose picture you like or who you, or if you come on somebody's post, there's a lot of that stuff out there. No, okay. Charles, that's 80% of what I see, what you just said. Of what you see. Yeah, 80% well, of what he, he, he was in the shower and I looked on his phone. I shouldn't have done it, but I looked on his phone. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stalking, that occurs when someone repeatedly harasses or threatens someone else, causing fear, yes. safety concerns. But that also includes, you know, you being the investor or somebody being the investigative uh, detective. Again, yes. that following you on social media so they can see who else you're following to police your boundaries. OK, now. To be clear, guys, I'm not saying that you don't need to have healthy boundaries online. I didn't say that. What I'm saying to you is that at the same time that you have to be willing to practice healthy boundaries online in places like this, the partner that you are with has to also practice healthy boundaries regarding your own activity, your space, your decisions and, and whatnot. Okay, so. Um, there's a whole lot that goes on with stalking that we don't even consider stalking today. There's so many people out there who are like, hey, I I just wanted to go on and see what he or she was doing online. And this is what I found. And it's like, okay, I really, really feel bad that you found that. And is that normally what you do? Because, you you know, (laughs) Charles, it's so underreported. Yeah, it's like the music is so loud. After a while, you yeah. don't hear it. Uh huh. Yeah, I what know you it. just, I just know. Charles, you know it, yeah. man. Yeah, I, Charles, I cannot in my couples therapy last mm-hmm. year. Yeah, that topic seventy five percent of the time comes up. Oh, I'm sure. It, we're, I'm sure. But, and Charles, we're, it has nothing to do with it. High schoolers get tortured, but it it doesn't stop yeah. in the thirties, forties, fifties, and up. Right. Well, I read your yeah, emails. Still- I, I read your yes. emails. Yep, that's right. There you go. So listen, guys, we are we are talking about male uh, victims of abuse. Listen, we've got uh, something very, very, uh, very, very, it could be very traumatic for you to, to sit through. And we're going to talk about it right after the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Let's do it. Hey, guys, we are back and we're talking about male domestic abuse and there are a lot of forms of male domestic abuse and one of the things that i want to talk to you guys about today is something that is very difficult for me uh to discuss in this particular fashion i know that it's also hard for a lot of people to hear okay and if you feel like you are triggered um then i would take a pause if i were you uh, take a breather and come back to it when you feel you're ready. If you Mm -hmm. uh, don't feel like you can do that, I would suggest if you feel like you've been triggered, if you've got a mental health professional in your life, uh, definitely reach out to them. Because when I say that whenever we're triggered by something, this is probably an area of our lives that we need to do some more work on, right? Um, It's not resolved. It's not not, still resolved, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's still active. It's still active. Yeah. Charles. So, Doc, you know, yes. man, uh, you go there. You, this. Yeah, you got to do it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Here we are. Versus MTP. What does MTP mean, guys? You know, you heard uh, Dr. Poulter talk about one of his calls as a former police officer was where um, he showed up and one person was made to penetrate another person. Well, that's what MTP means, made to penetrate. Okay. And that's a difference. Uh, it's a little different than, than rape. You know, MTP is a form of sexual violence that in some practice fields, you know, it's considered to be rape. Now, the CDC measures rape and MTP as separate concepts. 
Okay, and they view the two as distinct types of violence with potentially different consequences. Right, okay? right. You know, given the burden of these forms of violence in the lives of many Americans, yes, it's important to understand the difference in order to raise awareness. So let's talk about rape, Doc. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, rape, what's it going to include? It, yeah, unwanted- it, rape is not what we talked about. In the- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Penetration. Right? It's, unwanted. It's unwanted penetration, right? Uh, it's, it's physical force, you know. Yes. Uh, it's being unable to consent, right? Because a person may be intoxicated uh, or drugged, right? right? The incapacitated on some level that they lost consciousness. So um, that's that's where we're, we're talking about rape, okay? And a lot of us understand that, <sighs> right? Charles, how about date rape? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, and I think date rape would fall under a uh, lack of awareness, loss of consciousness, wouldn't it, Doc? Or coercion. Or coercion, you're on yeah. A, coercion. You're, you're on a date, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like all of a sudden you're there, yes, hot and heavy. Right. And Absolutely. he said you, you let him on or she led you on. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes. That, Okay, I didn't mean to take away from the numbers, but that mm-hmm. I think that gets underreported. I think that gets pushed out of some of the stuff you just mentioned, Charles, about rape yeah. and coercion. I see. Yeah, I could understand that too. Um, so let's talk about MTP and when that occurs, right? So MTP is occurring uh, when somebody's made to, or there was an attempt to make them sexually penetrate someone else without that person's consent or without their own consent as a result of physical force. Okay. Now I want to stop there with this one, Dr. Poulter, because that actually is extremely common among boys who are victims of sex trafficking. Okay. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you look up uh, a lot of times where the offender is a woman, and it's a boy who has been trafficked or coerced, it's always that particular dynamic where either the woman has forced the boy to have sex with her or the woman and a partner of hers um, are forcing that young man to have sex with them or someone else as they watch, okay? Right, voyeurism. This this is what's being, yes, this is what's being reported by victims, uh, male victims of sex trafficking. They were made to perform for other people to watch um, is what happens a lot of times with that. Um, And so, again, that can include uh, physical force or constraints. um, uh, And when we say constraints, we're talking about preventing somebody to to move freely. To leave? To leave, Yeah. 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 All right. Um, but there's also an element of, of drug use that's involved, okay, um, they, where you yes. could be the victim of someone drugging you and enforcing you to have sex either with them or with someone else, okay? Right. And that drug use, here's the, here's the thing about that, guys. I, I need you to understand this. That drug use could be involuntary or it could be voluntary, meaning that you drank something, took something for a recreational purpose, and then somebody comes along and takes advantage of you while you're intoxicated, and they force you to do things that you can't possibly give consent to, okay? They force you to penetrate someone when you can't give consent to. So that's MTP, all right? Um, so I know that that's heavy. I know that that's heavy. But I mean, Ooh. it's really, yeah. I, you, you, Charles, you start thinking about this, mm-hmm. <sighs> Charles. It is. It's the CIA of secrets. Oh yeah. Meaning it yeah. is behind yeah. Charles. That whole thing back earlier in the last ten years, the roofies, you know, mm. yeah, being dropped yeah. in where you are essentially you're blacked out, but you're awake. Right. That's right. Charles, that still yeah. goes on. Yeah. I'm out here in Los Angeles. That stuff still goes on. Mm, wow. 
that stuff still goes on. And in, my son was in college. He had to sign a waiver. You, you can't have sex with a woman if she's intoxicated. Mm, had to sign a waiver. Yep. They, everybody had to do it at the university. I don't even say the school's name. Man, he so told me that. I'm like, great. But wow, they have to do that. that. Right, right. Yeah, it's that prevalent that we've got to put this on paper right now. Hey, guys, th- hey. that is that's sickening to me. Charles, is- and I'm talking I'm talking at a major university. If I said to you, go, really? And, and out here in California, Charles, I, I have a high schooler. His girlfriend got really drunk. We mm-hmm. talked about it. He took him to her house, his house. And I said, we talked about if she's drunk, you don't you take her home, okay? Because yeah. you yeah. cannot, because right. that's rape. Yep, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Charles, the, absolutely. one of the best kept secrets, man. Guys don't understand. I'm talking guys under 22, 25. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she was. I didn't think she was that drunk. She was that drunk. She was taking vodka right. shots. She was not right. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you. You know, um, we yeah, want to yeah. get to because we, we put a lot of stats and things out there for you guys. We yes. also want to do another another portion of uh, of uh, the podcast and, and this topic today because it's, it's a lot, guys. So um, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the reasons why uh, men don't seek help or leave abusive relationships. So hold on and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back and we're talking about male victims of domestic abuse and sexual abuse. Um, again, it's a very contentious topic. It's very, very um, difficult to discuss. It's one that uh, we really on at a point where we're ready to uncover an American society. We're focused on some other things and we don't yet, as you've heard, have a lot yes. of men forward. So we want to talk about something with men that is often asked of women who are victims of abuse. A lot of times, you know, someone will hear about a woman who's abused and they'll ask that famous question, why didn't you leave? Well, believe it or not, guys, men get asked the same thing. And so we'll talk about uh, some of the reasons why men don't leave abusive relationships today. Okay, regardless of gender, ending a relationship is very difficult, especially an abusive yes. relationship. It's still very difficult. Okay, it takes now, it takes courage. Charles. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage because let's a lot let's of talk. courage. What if you've been isolated from everybody, like your family and friends, as you've been in a relationship with somebody abusive? And that's one of the things that abusers love to do, right? Is they love to isolate you from everybody else. <laughs> you know, they want to have they, want to they want to have complete control. And abuse, control. Charles, yeah. starts with control issues. Right. I tell yeah. women that men mm-hmm. control is the gateway to yeah. abusive relationships. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then once you're in that situation, you, you, you feel like oh. you can't go anywhere. Right. Right. Um, but, but here's another one, obviously, especially from a male standpoint, um, you may feel like uh, you, you're ashamed. You know, many men right. feel a lot of shame uh when they've been abused they've been unable to stand up for themselves right you like like because you know society will tell you hey man you got to be able to protect yourself right doc <laughs> all right charles i had it happen to one of my clients this week he finally yeah. spoke up to the woman and she broke up with him via text message mm. Mm. interesting and charles, yeah. And, and yeah these people are in their uh early 40s we're not talking rookies i see got it i mean we're not got talking it. college age kids yeah. He spoke up yeah. and she pretty much told him to F off. Yeah. And he needed, but he needed support in order to be able to speak up and establish that boundary for himself. And so it, what it, it sounds took, like, yeah, it took it, a lot. Right? It took a year. It took, it took a, a year to get year. there. Uh-huh. It took a year. A year. And, mm, wow. and Charles, I was grinding on him. I'm like, yeah. come on, you got to do this. Right. Right. I hear didn't you. want to be with his family, his mm-hmm. siblings, his yeah. friends. Right. Isolation, mm. subtle. Yeah. Okay. But pervasive. Here's one I got for you, Doc. Especially yes. when you consider how religious Americans tend to be, right? Um, religious oh can kind of dictate that you stay um, in these abusive relationships, right? Um, 
maybe your self-worth is low, you know, so low that you feel like the abusive relationship is, is what you deserve or that somehow God has put you in a position. Oh yes. God has put you in a position where this is a test and a trial for you. Okay. Where you're supposed to sit there and overcome with the person, right? This is your, I'm staring at you. Charles, no, yeah, it, propaganda that mm-hmm. we've never even. This makes World War II look like a cupcake sale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you're playing, when they use the God factor, yeah, right, Charles, that yep. is abuse at its highest form. Yes, yes, and a lot of people call that spiritual abuse, which that's a whole other thing we won't oh. talk about today. But yeah, <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Charles, yeah, right on. Uh, this thing about deserve. Mm-hmm. God's testing me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. uh, let's back up. Mm. Let's get off the deserve. Um, continue to go. Choice. Yeah. If yeah. you see this, that you're choosing to be abused, that starts to open the door for you to exit. Yeah. An exit strategy. Mm-hmm. Right, right. That's how I've seen victims right. get out of it, Charles, as men. Yeah. I yeah, choose yeah. not to be abused. Right. Or to be yeah. humiliated. As opposed to I deserve what or I have this. In, in this. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Here's one that I find um, that doesn't get a lot of a lot of talk uh, uh, about, doesn't get discussed a lot, at least not in the heterosexual community, obviously, but when you're in a same sex relationship, but you haven't come out to your family, that can, that can, um, you know, expose you to a lot of abuse, right? Charles, that is beyond cruel. Yeah. That to me is beyond cruel. Mm -hmm. I'll show pictures to your mother. I've had that my yeah. in my office, and mm-hmm. I gotta keep my. I'm gonna show pictures to your mother. I'm like what? Yeah, right. You can't do that. that blackmail, man. That whole thing just man. It, that's and, and that's so dirty. And and one of the things about that is, you know, when it, when you're talking about gay male victims of domestic abuse, the incidences of suicide climb astronomically when a person is involved in that type of situation you know um it's just it's amazing when you see these numbers and you hear the stories dog it's just like come on guys and a lot of people out there who are heterosexual right who are straight who support the barbershop group who listen to the barbershop group every now and then they hear us talk about something within the gay community and they're like wait a minute why are you talking about that guys you all have no idea yeah. how difficult it is for them to get on and live a healthy life um, uh, because of the stigma that in, involved. It's heavy. It is extremely heavy. Okay. Charles, it's extremely heavy. We're, we're still in the 1940s with the gay community in terms Absolutely. of awareness. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, agree. It's terrible. And Charles, that whole thing about abuse and gay relationships uh, it's frightening. Yeah. What little I've seen. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. It's I frightening. You. And uh, let me tell you, our, our gay listeners get support. Yeah. And talk absolutely. about how to get support. Start there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, guys, we have uh, a few more things to cover. Um, yeah. Uh, reasons why someone may not uh, seek help. Uh, but we do uh, want to take a break at the moment. Just sit tight and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back and we're talking about some of the reasons why men don't leave abusive relationships. Um, you know, previously we, we, we mentioned the, the shame that's involved. We talked about religious beliefs, uh, a lack of resources, right? Um, maybe you're in a same sex relationship and you haven't, mm-hmm. come out, you don't have anywhere to go as of yet. Right. Uh, but there's another one guys and that's denial. And just as, um, you know, with female domestic violence victims, uh, denying that there is a problem in your relationship is only going to prolong the problem, right? Right. Now, you may still love your partner when they're not being abusive and you'll believe that they'll change or something like that. And well, we know that that rarely mm-hmm. happens, right? No, can't do. Yeah. yeah. Charles, there's a saying that in psychology that 
denial, why so many people are denial, the comfort of the familiar many mm-hmm. times is more important than the health of yourself. Yeah. The comfort of the feeling. And Charles, that's mm-hmm. a denial. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so Absolutely. comfortable with this. I don't know what the other side looks like. Mm-hmm. So I'm staying on the I'm staying on this side of the wall. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I do want to point out something to you guys uh, about yeah. this, right? In a perfect world, when we speak out about our abuser, in a perfect world, our abuser is going to some way, shape or form, take responsibility for their actions. That's what we would like to see happen. I want to tell you guys that your healing doesn't really it's not going to work out that way. <laughs> that, it's a myth. That's a myth. That's a They're myth. going to take responsibility. Myth. Myth number right. one. That's yeah, huge myth. Uh, mm-hmm. In order for your life to change, your 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 partner or ex partner could still be in denial. In order for your life to change, you're going to have to be the one to get out of the denial. Okay, uh, right you're going to have to go through processes with your support people and or therapists. Uh, to create the closure you need for yourself. It's rarely going to have anything to do with the other person. A lot of you, you know, I told you the story about getting stabbed in college and somebody coming to me and apologizing about that and explaining what was going on with them. That's very rarely going to be the situation for you guys. Okay. So I want to make that clear. Okay. That's not the norm. Not even close. That's not the norm. Now, the other one that we have for you, and this is a big one. Ooh. This is a big one because I, I have a, I have a, a deceased friend uh, if you guys have been long listeners of the podcast, you know that I talk about a friend of mine who uh, succumbed to drug abuse. And uh, before he uh, lost his life to the abuse, to the drug abuse, he was being abused by his former spouse. Um, and he's being abused in a way that it wasn't physical, it was verbal, it was emotional, it was psychological, it was taking its toll. And one of the things that that spouse did a lot of times was use children against him okay use children against him so you know you may worry that if you leave your spouse will harm your children and he was worried about that he was worried about uh her harming the children but he was also worried about her preventing him from having access to the children and that's a big one you know Uh, that's brutal yeah charles mm -hmm. they call parent alienation Mm -hmm. the majority of the time charles it's parent control it's parent it's control. It's not, relationship. Right. It's not parent alienation. No. No. It's parent yeah, control. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't want to come to terms with that. Um, and the other thing guys, we know is we know why you stay in an abusive relationship where children are present because you know what? Obtaining custody of children is extremely challenging for fathers. The vast majority of states within the United States of America default to the custodial parent or default to the mother when it comes Correct. to children. All right. So we know that it's very, very hard. You may be getting abused. Even let me include financial abuse for some of you men as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, you may be getting abused or taken advantage of and you don't want to speak up because you don't want to lose access to your children. So these are some of the reasons uh, men will remain in those abusive environments. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you just leave? There's nothing to do. Nothing. There's no, nothing, nothing that's supporting men in their attempt to leave today. There are no male, better male uh, shelters where men can no, go. There, there, no. there are no pro- government programs that give men money for leaving an abuser. OK, uh, right now in America, there are programs, especially there are programs, especially for uh, women who are immigrants where if they can prove their their spouse beat them, they're automatically granted their U.S. citizenship and given uh, uh, financial means to go restart life for themselves. Okay. Nothing like this exists for men. Okay. Nothing at all like this exists for men. And we have to be real about that. All right. Charles, this thing about the kids, it, I, I have men right today, I'm going to say today, they're trying to make peace with the devil. Hmm. Okay, I'm not calling their wife a devil, but mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. level of mm-hmm. abuse, Charles, yeah, sends people to suicide. Yeah, right. Men and women. Absolutely, absolutely. I hear you. 
I hear you. So, you know, guys, uh, those again are some of the reasons people don't leave. And in our next segment, we're gonna, we're segment, we're going to talk about some things that you can do if you are experiencing this or if you know someone who is experiencing this to kind of like start to create a way forward. So sit tight. We'll be right back after the break. Hey, guys, we're back and we're talking about male domestic abuse of uh, victims. OK, um, in the last uh, segment, we talked about some reasons why people might not be able to leave or, or may not want to leave. But now we want to discuss ways to protect yourself as an abused man. OK, um, you know, it could have very serious physiological effects, psychological effects, uh, physical effects um, and impacts on you. So it's really yes. important that you, you know, admit that there is a problem. You seek help. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're a failed man. It doesn't mean that you have failed right. as a husband. Okay. You got to get away from that. Nope. That's yeah. Let that one go. That's a tactic and a ploy that has been used against you. And then your mind just kind of stays in that trauma loop and tells yourself that same thing over and over. That's part of that shame. It's you'll just kind of rehash those same stories. It, and then, it, yeah. Terrorizes you, Charles. It, right. It's terrorizing. Yeah, because that imposter terror. syndrome, that imposter oh. syndrome, that thinking you can't do any better. You can't do any right. better, okay? And they say that too. Charles, one thing I want to say is that every man listening, what you just said, you can leave. you got to start with that belief. Yeah. you got to start yeah. with that, Charles. I mean, interrupt you, but you got to start there. Oh, you no, can do no, this. That's good. that's good. I'm glad you went there because that's just the thing. You know, leave if possible. Be aware of the signs that may trigger a right. response from your partner and be ready to leave quickly. You know, um, if you need to stay to protect your children, make sure you call emergency services for that. Okay, yep. don't don't try to do that alone. The other thing that you don't wanna do guys is don't retaliate. It's not gonna be a good look, especially nope. as man, okay? Doesn't play well. Doesn't play Does not well. play well. Nope. Okay? Um, an abusive Char partner may try to provoke you to retaliate. Yeah. Don't fall for it. Okay. Charles, I've had some guys, and I talk about getting evidence, who mm -hmm. for some reason their phone was in their um, shirt pocket and the mic was on, um, and they recorded okay. the conversation. Yeah. Hey, and it was admissible go. in court, and the wow. DA took it in. Yeah. yeah because he, 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 it was abuse. I've had yeah. other people film it mm -hmm. with their phones, and Charles, yeah. it's a lifesaver if you yeah. can do it and mm -hmm. not be provocative when you do it. That's right. So, so it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because those are basically two of our points. One is get the yes. evidence of the abuse, right? You want to, you want to keep a journal of, uh, of the abuse with records, yes. you know, dates, times, witnesses. If, if you can get photos of the abuse of your, in, you know, your, or your injuries, yes. do that. If you've been to the doctor because of your injuries, you want to make sure that you keep those documents um, yes. and, and preserve them. Okay. And remember that medical personnel aren't likely to ask if a man has been abused when you go to the doctor. If you show up with a black eye, they're not going to be like, hey, you know, how are things at home? That's not what they're going to ask you. No. So it's up to you to ensure that they know what's going on and get that stuff documented. Now, as Dr. Poulter mentioned, you know, keep um, a mobile phone, keep your cell phone, keep the evidence of the abuse, you know, yes. keep the documents in hand. Um, these pictures. things are really take pictures. It's important. And, um, you know, one of the, the other things that we want to mention to you guys is, is this, right? You want to be able to obtain advice from a domestic violence program. All right. Or legal yes. aid, you know, and, right and let on. me say this to you, just because we don't have a lot of places that are focused on men as domestic abuse victims, it doesn't mean that you can't get in touch with one of the other shelters or programs, you know, yes. at that point, you, you're desperate. And I'll say this, if you need to act desperate, then you are desperate, be desperate. Don't, don't just say, Oh, you know what? They don't deal with guys. So what mm -hmm. am I going yes, to do? do? No, no. And here, here, let me say this doc. Real yeah. quick, real, real Go quick. ahead. Cause, Cause the thing about it is when it comes to social workers, right they're not they're not under any gender obligation guys okay That's right so when a social worker, when you approach a social worker and you tell them that you've been the victim of abuse 
and they fail to direct you or take a report or lead you to some, to some place or whatever, they are derelict in their duties now. Yeah, negligent. Oh, they, they're negligent. Yeah, okay. negligent. A mandated reporter isn't a gender reporter. That's right. They're a man. Yeah, it's not yep, gender, they're, Charles. They're mandated. They're, it doesn't matter. Okay, child, mm -hmm. man, woman. Okay, so speak up. You've got to be able to do that. Okay, because those are the things that are going to start helping you move on from um, from that that violent relationship that you've been in okay so we wanted right. to cover those things uh, really quick guys i do have a couple of announcements for you all um one of the things that I, I encourage you all to do is make sure that you visit uh tbgmen.com and sign up for the updates there also uh make sure that you're following us on instagram twitter and mm -hmm. Facebook, because you could be potentially missing some very good articles uh, that we can't put on, like Instagram, for example, uh, articles right. that cover a lot of aspects of you guys' lives, all right? And the other thing I want to mention to you all, too, is this. This particular subject carries a lot of shameful emotion, okay? Dr. Mm -hmm. Poster has written a great book called The Shame Factor. You can purchase that on the website. You can also purchase it at Amazon. And it will help you start to address uh, toxic shame in your life. And you'll begin to see some threads, okay, some connections there. You'll make some connections between um, the, the voices that you tell yourself and how you allow people to treat you. OK, so it's really important that you're able to get your hands on that book. Lastly, if you're listening to the podcast on your phone, please, please consider supporting the Barbershop Group podcast. You can do it on a monthly recurring basis right yes. on your phone. All you have to do is go to the podcast page itself and click the button support. OK. Put in your card number. It's totally safe to offer your monetary support for the Barbershop Group podcast. As you can hear, we put a lot of information to get together for you guys. We do a lot of the research. Uh, we turn it into bite-sized pieces for you um, so that you can share with other individuals. And it really, really helps to have you guys support. It takes a lot of time. Uh, we're funding it as much as we can. But We'd also like to be able to get more guests on the show. We'd like to be able to introduce some of our own workshops and programs to you guys. And so it takes funding uh, to be able to do that. OK, so listen, guys, it's Friday. It's the weekend. As I always say, um, you know, you want to take care of yourselves. We are still dealing with the pandemic. You know, it's not going away anytime soon. All right. Uh, we know that the CDC uh, is saying, hey, if you're fully vaccinated, you can take your mask off in some yeah. place. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you're not going to contract the virus. You can still get the virus. OK, so you've got to be well informed about these things. All right. But as I always like to say to you guys, be sure to love you more and love your people more. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Take care.